Hello ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Antwood. And today's video is about my Aerodynamics Perpius or Metance and 10 to over 300 workers in four months. And I'm telling you guys now, that took me at least 15 takes to get that name right and I've probably still butchered it. And if I have, don't take the mickey. I don't know Latin, I suck at it. But anyway, Metance. Now I couldn't even decide on a title for this video. I was gonna go with there's no more room left at the inn and you'll see why in a bit later on. But I decided to go a bit more clickbaity, so sue me. Now I do have a small playlist of these ants because I've only had them a short while so there's not many videos, but check out the link in the top right corner now and you guys can check out that playlist. Now if you do check that playlist out, you'll see that my last video was done just over a month ago and it was called uh, Idronomics and they're insanely fast growth. Now look at this video from the last video that makes sense, yeah. And just look how many numbers I've got here. Now, they're obviously in the Saturn nest. They didn't overly take well to it, so I've connected this nest to them. So, but just look at the numbers and then check out this video here. Just look at the numbers that I've got here. And this is not me exaggerating. This has literally been just over a month, and this is how quickly this species grows. It is something else. If you thought Solenopsis grow quickly, I think these guys are elapsing them because not only are they growing really fast, but they're big ants as well. It is absolutely insane. Now the nest was full before, but it's even more full now. And wait until I get a macro shot on this nest and you'll see what I mean about the brood growth. And this is starting by the entrance, pretty much the tube's just there to go into the outward as you can see. Now, just look at it, man. I mean, I've got so much brood going on and I'm absolutely in love with their iridescent colour. And you don't just see this when you get the macro lens on, you can see this in an outworld, and you'll see a video of that a bit later. But they're absolutely gorgeous, and they're big as well. But just look at this pile of pupae here. Now, these, it's just mounted up to the roof, and this isn't overly a small nest, I think this is a medium, I could be wrong, I can't remember now. But yeah, it's not a small nest in itself, but they've absolutely stacked it full of brood. But wait until you get to the hydration area. Look at how much larvae I've got there. Now, if you think that's insane, check out this next chamber when I pan to it. Yeah, larvae hood, great, nice to see it. Look at all of those eggs. Now, these eggs are not overly old, they're relatively fresh, but just look how many there are of them. There is absolutely stacks upon stacks upon stacks, and there's nothing in here but fresh brood, youngish brood, I think it's a couple of larvae bits, but just mainly eggs. Yeah, there is some larvae in there, but it's young larvae, but mainly eggs. It is absolutely, insane these girls are going to be the new bane of my life when it comes to trying to control their growth and their setups and stuff like that it is something else i'm telling you now if you thought that was insane check this out this is actually in the satin nest now i won't lie they don't particularly like satin nest but look at how much brood's in here as well it's not only in the test tubes which i think it's too humid in there for them they don't like it but they've put it all over the outworld surface as well um, and you see that pile there, and I've got another pile in the corner here. It is nothing short but insane. But in the time of filming my last video for these guys, I actually ordered another nest from Akushi, but I just don't think that's gonna be big enough now. I really need to move them out of this satin nest because clearly they don't like it. Now the reason for that is I think it's more along the lines that the test tubes are too humid for it, hence why they're quite happy to have the brood out in the outworld surface, but not in the test tubes itself. When there clearly is room still left in the test tubes if they choose to use it, but I just think the humidity is too high. Now, originally, my Solenopsis setup that I made, I was going to use that for my Carabera Diversa because they're in the point where they're going to explode too soon as well. There is a video coming with them soon. I'm just waiting for the new stuff to arrive from Akushi so I can film me to catch it all up and give you guys a good update on the Carabera. But I think with this growth rate that these guys have got, I really need to look at moving them into the setup that I've got for my Solenopsis because these guys are going to need the space. Uh, they're going to need the roaming space and I also think they're going to need the um, nest space as well. And I should be getting the nest back from Akushi soon, hopefully, um, so I can utilise that as well as the other cork nest that I've got for them. So that's the kind of plan going forward with these guys. But it is what it is. What I do like about these, though, is that they are relatively clean ants. Now, I did try and clean that pile out, but genuinely, my Hoover has given up the ghost and I've got to order a new one off eBay. But I got the worst of it up. But they do pile it all into a corner, which means the rest of the outworld's quite clean. That could be because they're using it to store brood, or it could be that's just the nature of them and how they like to keep the place clean. Either way, they don't make my life overly difficult. Now, they are growing really fast, and it is going to be a concern about their growth rate going forward. 
but I think I hope, well, I think I hope I should be able to keep on top of it. And I don't need to worry about the escapism as much with these guys because they're such big ants. Unlike the Solenopsis, which could get out of the tiniest gap known to man, these guys should have it more difficult. But when I was cleaning them out, they get very bitey and I've got a video here, I'll show you it. So when I was cleaning them out, obviously, uh, one of them crawled up and managed to get a bite of me. Now I can safely say this bite really hurts. You know, you wouldn't believe it to look at it because it doesn't look too bad, but they are, they can pinch you. The jaws are really, really strong and it hurts. But don't let that put you off though, because you know, they're only little bites. They're not stinging and stuff like that. But this is taken obviously in the out world because there's a cockroach there. And this is what I was talking about earlier in the video, where even in the out world, you can actually see the, the iridescent off their backs, off their abdomens and stuff. And it is absolutely gorgeous. These ants are probably one of my most attractive ants, probably close to my Mesomine Hesperium, where I think they're really, really good looking. Now, they're not polymorphic, which is a trait that I absolutely love in ants, but these have got their own little characters. They are very aggressive when defending the nest when it comes to me cleaning it out. They're, they don't swarm the prey as much as I'd expect for a, such an aggressive ant, but they do react to it, as you can see from the videos that I put up earlier in this video 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 I'm saying that a lot today but they're absolutely gorgeous and I do recommend these for anyone keeping them wise I don't personally think it's very difficult just keep them top full of protein they are kept at a steady 25 degrees that's rough 25 26 degrees which is currently in my outworld I don't heat them above that and they've done absolutely fine as you can see that uh, lit I'm not even joking guys it's literally a month and a bit time difference between the last video and this one and they've absolutely exploded if that's the kind of rate of growth that they do then I think in my next video if it's another month's time I'll be talking about moving house because they're taking over everywhere because they're just so so growing so quickly I absolutely do love them and I do recommend them for any ant keepers out there that are looking at getting a fast growing large species. Now they're not cheap though. Um, I think that these were retailing on Ant's Davy website when I bought them for about 120 pounds ish. So not the cheapest of ants, but unlike other ants of that cost, such as his honey pots when he was selling them, they were around the same price, but they are very, very finicky and very difficult to found. These guys, I have had no issues with them at all. So I would say that they potentially could be, from my experience, be more for a beginner and person. But you are going to need the money to back you up with these guys because their growth is insane. And as you probably expect, the Solenopsis, when they did get out, did manage to get a couple, I noticed, in their outworld. But with their numbers, their strength, their aggressiveness, I don't think the Solenopsis stood a chance and any that got in never managed to get out to lead a trail to get others towards them. So they managed to look after themselves. But not only that though, I think the Makushi setup as well did prevent any mass ingress into their outworld. I was gonna do a video on my other Campanota species that got attacked by my Solenopsis to see how they're getting on two weeks later, but there's not a lot to report on the, other than the fact they're not actually laid in the eggs yet. Um, so I still think they're quite stressed. Now the Campanota Sei, she, her brood have developed into workers and she's got about 10 workers again, but she's not laid any more fresh eggs, which is a point of concern for me, to be honest. My Campanotus Sei, uh, not that is the Sei, as I just talked about, the Campanotus um, Sensibinus are in the same boat. She's got brood, but she's not laid any more fresh eggs. And my Feds, Campanotus Feds or Fedakushi or Koyai or whatever you pronounce it, they're in the same boat as well. They're still recovering. She hasn't laid any more eggs, but she still has some brood. So that was not a lot I could really use to explain the video, but then I came across these guys when I was feeding and was like, these guys have grown massively, I need to show them. And they're absolutely lovely. Now this video goes on for a couple more minutes and I'm inclined just so you guys can watch them and see how beautiful they are. Um, play it till the end and just shut up and let you listen to the music.
No, I think these guys are absolutely gorgeous. I've got a strong feeling that these may become the star of my channel and replace my Solenopsis now that they've gone. If you guys agree with that, by all means in the comments saying you reckon so, or even if you think that it won't be these, it'll be another species of mine, by all means put a comment as well and tell me what you think will be the new star of my channel. So it's a short and sweet video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. At the time of this gets released, I should be in Wales, at Bike Park Wales, breaking my arms again, mountain biking, but we'll have to wait and see. Now I really don't want to break my arms, seriously. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already. But I also have a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. So a big thank you to Adam W, Antantix, Antimatter, David D, Jason W, Paul A, Pavance, PJ Grant, and the 530 Ski. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, check out the link below. And I also need to thank my YouTube members, which you can just click the link below this video if you want to join. And that is Antimatter, Lee, PJ Grant, and Makushi. So another big thank you to you guys too. But that's it for today then, guys. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing my next one. Bye-bye for now.